and they have expressed their um, uh, excitement about the trip that they have gone to. It was a blessing that they were able to go back often to help out their church. Thank you for sharing us today. May the Lord bless you and bless all of us. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Fathers, thank you for the moment that we can hear wonderful voices that to praise you. May you continue, Lord, to bless their heart. I give them opportunity to praise you always, Father, and to bring joy to the heart of those who need it. Lord, be with us today as we're going to speak about David's again and help us to learn and gather some sample here and there so we can use it for our daily life. Be with me, Father, and help me to deliver your message today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. <coughs> today I want to um, <coughs> take you again to the the journey with um, David. I would put it as the hiding place for David today. If we were to follow the text of uh, 1 Samuel 22, 1 to 2, you find some introduction and what happened after David had run away from kings, cut all the crutches, get out from the king, get out from his wife, um, get out from his good friends, and finally, you know, went down to the capes, and where he could find rest with God. So today we're going to talk about that, and um, hopefully this um, story of David will continue to bless us, so our heart and soul will be ready to prepare for God to examine us, for God to bless us, that we one day can be a man of God's own heart as well. <clears throat> when you see this um, insignia, uh, you, you know that Hitler is behind it in World War II. Nazis is in the rage of um, looking for all the Jews and blame them for whatever it didn't work well in Germany and trying to kill them, all of them if they can, old men, young men, women and kids and everyone. They can put them in prison camp and, and they will torture them and they will put them into the gas chamber Sometimes the Jews themselves are selling their own brother and sister, luring them into the big room like this and say, well, I'm going to help you to get away from this place. And then they say, wait here, I'll come back with the big truck. And what happened? He closed the door. And behind the door, he turned on the gas and killed on his brother and sister. Some of those people are there in those kind of time of trouble to save themselves, or to make some money, and things like that. But in the time like this, there was a family, a family of the Ten Boons. They were Dutch family. In, in their house, it's also a place where they do business. And the uh, old man is a watchmaker. And so they built a little room upstairs. Actually, it's a ceiling. And no one can tell what's there. So they will open the door for the Jews' family were passing through. Over the years, there were hundreds and hundreds of them passing through that room and behind those closed doors <clears throat> to go to safety. But you know, that's how God providing sometimes the hiding place for people. And um, <clears throat> Corrie Ten Boone is 
one of the daughter of the Ten Boon family, she has a very concerned and deep, committed heart to save everybody for Jesus Christ. So she put the people into this room, feed them, clothe them, and help them to move on to another place. But you know, as time go by, uh, some people heard about it and go and told the story to the Gestapo. Gestapo. And there, no time, carried Hen Boons and her family were put in jail in the prison camp. In the camp they called uh, uh, Chuenigan. And there she also used to be a person who providing a place for refuge, but now she is herself looking for a place for refuge, but there is no a place for refuge in the camp. But she rests and seek God in her soul, seek God for the, a place of refuge. She can sing a song and she can smile in the cell and she can also tell people about Jesus while she was in the camp. It was miserable if you read the story how the guards, you know, abused her, but yet she was able to forgive them to the love of Jesus Christ. The meantime, um, um, the meantime, David also have ran away looking for the hiding place. Even though David had been, you have seen, uh, you have followed the story, that David is a hero for the whole country, and he saved the country from being slave to the Philistine, and yet now serving the king so well, and even sing the song for the king when the king was mad and sad, and he was there for the king all the time. But he knows the king didn't like him now, and he had to run away from the king. He ran away from his wife, ran away from his good friend, and therefore he's seeking the place they call the Cape of Abdullah. David left a gat and escaped to the Cape of Abdullah. When his brothers and his father heard about it and his household heard about it, they all came to him and, and stayed there with him. All those who were in distress or in debt or, or discomfort gathered around him and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. The idea here is David, didn't, David went there alone, seeking God for a place to hide, a place where he can be comforted by God. It is the big cave with coal and the rocks around it and darkness. But David was there, <clears throat> but he found a place where God and him can talk to each other. David would suffer undeserved persecution as well as um, uh, a sister Ten Boon. But somehow, God is there for him and he found deliverance in a cave. Therefore, people heard about him, where he was. His father came, his mother came, all the family, the brothers also came, and they all came. A lot of people were distressed at that time and because of Saul having, so having a, what do you call a iron rule. And um, they also want to be free from Saul's hand. So they came. If you look at the map, <clears throat> you will find that um, that red dot there is in the desert. From up there, you see Jerusalem, how to work with this uh, light here. Jerusalem on the, the right side there and come down to Abdulin, Abdulam. It is now uh, villages, but um, it's not that great. Somehow it takes about 30 miles 
away from Jerusalem that uh, David have ran or walked or jogged or whatever to come over there to the caves. And uh, from Bethlehem is about uh, 22 miles away. You see how far it was. And so when you are desperate, you will run anywhere you can where the enemy cannot see you. And so this is where David went and stayed. And there he made a camp and to be a stronghold, stronghold <clears throat> and where 600 men, of course, at the beginning it was only 400, but um, afterward people came with 600 men. And he there training them and make them become a strong warrior for Israel later on. So here is the challenge that um, in the cave, all right? Um, because of Saul having trouble with those people, people uh, poor and needy, they ran to David, and David is uh, taking care of them. <clears throat> well, how come this is jump? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Somehow I jump. Okay. Okay. What happened here is when David was in the caves, he had time to be with God and he cried to God in every issue he can, just like you and I, when we're in trouble, we should just pray to God and talk to God. So in, in this, this place, <clears throat> he was able to write a song. A song on the Psalm um, 142, 1 to 3, and also 5 to 7. It said here, When my spirit, well, we go back, <clears throat> I cry aloud with my voice to the Lord. I make supplication with my voice to the Lord. I pour out my camp, uh, I pour out my complaint before him, and I declare my trouble before him. So David came and asked God, and telling God all those problems he had, and next he would say, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, and then thou didst know my path. God acknowledges everything about your past, okay? I cry out to thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge, my portions in the land of the living. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescues me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. I cry to you, Lord, well, okay, for that I may give thanks to thee, to thy name, and the righteous will surround me, for thou will deal bountifully with me. As you read all those psalms, you can see those the cry of David, those the song of David. He still have time to write it. And how about you and me? If you're in trouble, you are boxing somewhere, would you seek other alternative is to come to God and talking to him and cry out to him? And somehow God hear you. And yet David have um, he had the idea of one day God is going to open up the better opportunity for him. Here, something we need to remember. I actually, I wrote it down here for you. Thank you so much. Being a person that God loved, being a person that uh, God's, after God all had, doesn't mean that you never experiencing the concentration camp or the despair of the cave. It means that being able to sing and the silent, uh, sing in the silent darkness like David did. 
And uh, also, he have a confidence that one day God will deal a beautifully, a bountifully with him again, or with you again. You see, what happened here is um, <clears throat> God seldom doesn't leave you alone in your hiding place. He will create some ministry for you. You better watch out. But instead of saying, what happened to me? Why me? And you cry all over every, everywhere you go. But just watch out that God is going to um, do some ministry for you by, come on now, by sending somebody to be with you. For instance, like um, uh, Corey Ten Boom. She was in the prison. But yet, she was able to open her heart to the people who are in the jail. The guards and also, even though the guard have done bad things towards her, bitters against her, and she was one time in a lecture, she gave a lecture to the people. After she got out of the, of the camp, she have gone to 60 countries and give lectures to people to let people know that there is always hope that the love of Jesus Christ never been taken away from them, even that. And she will go all around. And one time she was talking about forgiveness. And there came a guard who molested her, and she hated that guard so bad, but yet she was able to forgive him. And so she gave the love, she gave the comfort to the people around her and pray for them while she is in the camp. And the same here, David also brought 400 desperate men who needed help, and he became their leader at that time. Watch out for you and me everywhere you go. We have to have time with God and knowing God is going to use you no matter where you are. Instead of complaining, we will sing a song just like Saul and Silas were in the jail in Philippi. And they were beaten to death. 39 slash was on the back, lying down on the wet um, stall, you know, and on the floor with the dirt and dust, and the hand was, and put a chain on the leg was in the chains, and the neck even have something here. They were lying down in the stall. But at Midnight, the two of them sing the song, praising God. So to give the people who were there as a, uh, what you call the prisoner will have a heart, that rejoicing heart, that God had listened to the song and opened up uh, the, the jail's door and all the chains were loose. Imagine, you have ministry wherever you are. And David also had ministry and ministered to all the 600 men. Think about it. But if you are sitting down and say, why me, Lord? I've been working so hard for you. Why you do this to me? And if life is not fair and all this kind of thing, the devil will surely will work with you. And you will just rot in there in the cave forever. But David and Ten Boon, having the spirit of praising God and seeking for deliverance from God. Now the challenge that he has, being with the other people, David found his cave filled with family as well as strangers. And all the refugees from Saul's faulty leadership, they all coming to him. Yet the Bible said, so David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Abdullah. And when his brother and his father's household heard about it, they went down there with him. And everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, discontent, gathered to him, and he became a captain over them. And now there were about 400 men. Instantly, David went out, people just followed him. 
and there he make the best out of it, protect them, and take care of them. And I know for sure a man in the caliber of David who loved the Lord always, he will love the flock or he loved the sheep. Remember, David was a shepherd. Now all these 400 men came and they become his sheep and he take care of them. You and I too can think of ourselves as a shepherd. When we have friends coming by, when people are needed help, we are there for them. And we open our wallet and give to them that need it. Open our house, even though it's small for them. There, they can uh, have a place to stay. They will have done all that. And then the, here, the, what he does also, this is his good character. His good character is he's seeing the need. When, whenever we see people coming to us, we have to look at their need. What do they need? And we don't just talk, we do the work. You say, the whole nation was each under Saul's heavy-handed rule. Of 400 who joined David in the cave, some were under great pressure and distress. Of course, we repeat it. And um, <clears throat> the other were in debt due to Saul's heavy taxation. The other were discontent and had been wrong and mistreated. And their spirit were beginning to sour. Saul is terrible. He heard about David went to see the priest in, in, the, in Nayot. And he sent the people down there and, and asking him, what have you done to David? He is someone who, you know, he's my enemies, and you've been helping him, right? So they, he killed all the priests and the family. All the children in that town were killed. He's a bad man. That's the reason why most people ran away to see David. And because of their distress, because they are not happy with Saul, instead of being a good king, he become a terror, just like Nazi Hitler at that time went out and trying to get everybody into cell and also kill them if they can. So millions and millions of Jews had been killed at that time. The devil was not successful at the time that um, the story of Esther, remember? There was a man who hated the Jews so much and they make a guillotine ready to kill the Jews. All the nation of the Jews will be killed in that time, but yet they will not succeed. So until the time of Nazis or Hitler, the devil used Hitler to kill the Jews, almost wipe out. But anyway, when they would see the need of the people, and he helped them, and he gave them what they need. Another one is he accepting them as the leader. He recognized their need, a David gave of himself to meet them, and he became the group leader. In stealing, what do you call that? Characters and directions in their life, he trained them to be a mighty warrior, the very strength of Israel. Remember, David, after the cave experience, he trained all these people to be a good warrior. And these 600 people were always with him. And they are the ones that are protecting David. And they are the ones that are going out to fight with David and make Israel become great. And Israel become great. And, and when David leave the throne for his son Solomon, and Solomon lived in peace for 60 years, no enemy came at all because they are afraid of David and they know what David have done to them or how good David was to them as well. But anyway, he have accepted the leadership of the people. So sometimes you and I as a Christian, when you go into the place where they need you the most, you are there to work out as the leaders and helping them in whatever they need instead of, don't bother me, I'll leave me alone, you know what I mean? Some of us 
are so selfish in nature, but yet if you were giving your life to God, let God use you, you will be just like David. You see their need, and you meet their need, and, and you accept the responsibility, whatever they need to do. They want to eat, though we got to do something. We got to go out and do something to help them and train them because um, the enemy is coming. Saul was coming about 3,000 men uh, looking for David, would turn every place uh, up and trying to find David and all these 600 men. But David have to train all these men so they can help themselves. We are a people of God. And here we should learn uh, a little bit about <clears throat> uh, the thought that we should, <clears throat> we should um, learn. He said, being one of, in, in the darkest point of David's life, God gave him a ministry, a ministry helping 600 men and who had been weakened by despair to become strong warrior. In our life too, God often used the cave experience to give us a purpose and direction. So next time, you find yourself in the cave. Be aware that how God may be wanting to use you. Prepare yourself to be brought out of that cave and into the new ministry. So just remember that, my dear brother, sister, no matter what happened and, um, <clears throat> in your life as... Um, <clears throat> As uh, James was telling us that welcome all the trouble that will come into your life. Because that trouble is going to make you strong. You will have patience, you will learn everything from your trouble. And then you will be complete and do not need anything when the time comes. So uh, just remember that when you are in the cave, just watch out. God is going to give you some ministry to do. Amen? Let's go on to the next thing. Okay. Now we talk about the challenge of David. Okay? God seldom leaves us to rest in our hiding place. God seldom leaves us to rest in our hiding place alone. Okay? We can learn from this lesson. Um, where am I? Um, how can we jump? Okay. Should be number two. Okay. Anyway, let me uh, work with my note here. Sometimes it won't work out. And, and what will happen here is the next thing is after the challenge, then it's going to be a change of life. Okay. The change of life is when you are in situation like that, your life has to be altered. You cannot enjoy whatever you used to be enjoying. And before we wrap up this lesson, that's what it was. Before we wrap up this lesson, let us analyze today with uh, radical change from lonely desperation to God and trusted leadership. Think about it. There were three reasons to explain why God showed David in the cave of despair, the bright light of deliverance. So, and here it is. The challenge number one, he admitted that he was needed help from God. David openly expressed to God with his uh, cavernous fear and loneliness to see in Psalm 122 that we just, we just read a while ago that I cry out my voice to the Lord. Deliver me from my persecution. So he recognized he needed help. So he also cried out for help. And this time in Psalm 57 show us that he has pain and also 
And here he, he said, Gracious to me, Lord, O God, be gracious to me, for my soul take refuge in thee. For my soul take refuge in thee. And in, and in the shadow of thy wing I will take refuge until destruction pass by. You rest in God until the destruction pass away. I will cry to God most high, to God to accomplish all things for me. So he believed in that, God is going to do all that. He will send them, send from heaven and save me. And he re reproaches him with uh, tramples upon me. A God will send forth his loving kindness and his uh, truth. My soul is among the lion. I must lie among those who breath for fire. Okay? Anyway, even the sons of men, even the sons of men whose teeth are spear and arrow, and their tongues as sharp sword, be exalted above the heaven, O God. Let thy glory be above all earth, above all earth. My dear brother and sister, you and I have ability to cry out to God and also learn that God is ready to help you out. And he also has a teaching spirit, a teachable spirit. Many of us are not teachable, but God cannot use us. We have to learn to be teachable. When you go into a new job, somebody just so cocky, I don't want to hear nobody, I know everything already. But just always be kind and nice to other new people and also learn to accept a new training from other people. Even though you know a lot, but when you come to a new place, a new place is a place where it's new to you. So therefore you need to learn how to listen to your superior, to your friend. But David has an also uh, teachable, teachable spirit. Here's what he called uh, throughout David's life. He had learned that in all such uh, situations, God was his protector and deliverer. How about you? Do you have the experience of loving God so much that you cannot let go knowing that God loves you and he will protect you? He had tasted of God's deliverance again and again, and, and the memory that taste linger forever in his heart. Have you had experience like that? That whenever you need God, God protecting you, God has given you that deliverance. I remember when I was a, a young boy, 18 years old, and came from Thailand with only $100 in my pocket, came to America, sit on an airplane. Every time the airplane uh, hit that air pocket, tuck, 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 I would kneel down and pray to God, God, please save my life. You don't just let me die here on a plane. But knowing that God had protected me, when I land here in a state, I have a place where I can rest, a place where I can work. I give them $100 and say, sir, it is $100 for my down payment, for my school, for my living quarter, and they give me a job. And God giving that. And throughout the whole year, and I have people sending in the money for me to take care of my needed in school because I believe God is going to help me. My dad asking me, son, how could you go there? I have, I have no money for you whenever you need help. I couldn't help you. But I said, my God is great. He has so many children in the world, and the children of God are going to help me. That's how I told my dad. And my dad said, son, go, if you have that faith. That's how we get here in the state. Until today, I still have you as my brother sister. I don't have any brother sister of my own, but you all are my brother sister because God is the father who has many children. You are my brother sister. So we have to always remember that experience what God has done for you. Nothing wrong of repeating what God has done for you. It's, it's a glory to God when you remember that. That's what David had. He knows that God will help him. 
And he had a teachable spirit, of course, to continue on. Shortly before fleeing to the cave of Abdullah, when he uh, afraided insanity before ashes, and God mercifully delivered him, and David showed his teachable and then uh, and spirit when he composed his song. In other words, when, when he went away from um, uh, uh, King Saul and he went into the city of Gath, where the king of Gath, his, his name is Ashes, and he afraid that Ashes and the men are going to know that it was David who killed the giant, so they're going to kill him. So he was so, so afraid. So he acted weird. He acted like he's insane and uh, doing his saliva into the beer and act like a crazy man. So somehow the king said, let him go. So in any way, and somehow David had been brought to God. And um, <laughs> and he said, oh, test and see that the Lord is good. He invited us to test God and see the Lord is good. Many of us are not caring much about God. When you're in trouble, you already figure out, I'm going to save myself. I'm going to fix it out, fix everything. I don't need to come to God. I don't want to bother God. But he said, taste out the God, how God is good. How blessed is he, the man who takes refuge in him. It's from his experience, what he's gone through. And he challenged all of you to call unto God when you need him. Oh, test it and see how good is God. My dear brother and sister, he said, Oh, fear the Lord. You, he's saying, for to those who fear him, here is no want. When you fear God, we make God your king. You don't need anything, as David said, uh, for those, um, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What it means is, you don't need to worry about anything. When Jesus said, don't worry about anything, about tomorrow, what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to be, just believe in me, I will provide for you. So Jesus said that, and God said it to you. He said, oh, fear the Lord, and you, he's saying, for those who fear him, there is no, no one. The young lion do back and suffer, uh, uh, do lack and suffer hunger, but they shall seek the Lord, shall not, but they that seek the Lord shall not be in one of any good thing. That's what David said through his experience. Many are, uh, what you call, many are of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all, and the Lord redeemed of his servants, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. That Psalm 34, 8 to 10. You have to remember that David spent time with God. David wrote this thing in his diary. Are you writing down your diary every day you go on? Have you depending on God and write it down your journey? And one day, you'll be able to use it. Let somebody else learn from your thing. The Lord redeem of his servant, and none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Amen? And, and God love all of us. And I'm going to wrap up here. There is a song of deliverance that uh, David feel. My dear brother, sister, you and I will experience this joy when you are in trouble. If you remember that God is your refuge and we don't need anything. The David whose song the, the David, like David, whose song is reverberated, uh, river, river, <laughs> reverberated, I'm sorry, I can't say it, uh, a message of faith and hope within the cave and rocky wall. So you can see the echo, what he wrote here. 
Carrie Ten Boom is also sang the song and at a taste to God deliverance. So Carrie Ten Boom told the story of her life that um, through those years, even though he, she hated all the guards who mistreated her, mistreated her sister, and her father died in, in the jail as well. She hated them very much. But the sister says, Sister Bessie said, you cannot hate them forever. Jesus forgive them, and you have to learn to forgive. And, and it's hard for Ten Boom, I mean, the Corey, but Corey said, I came out because of that, with her sister. And so, because she took a refuge in the secret room of God's love, her despair was never quelled. Even when confined in the cold, gray, solitary cell in a Shaman Ninja, she sang songs that were bright and rich with joy. Many of you here, like um, Herman and our sister there, Esther, they always remember all the songs. When we were singing over here in our, uh, our prayer meeting room, and we have songbook, and, and we don't have one for him, he said, don't worry, I remember them. Sometimes we need to learn to uh, remember the songs so we can sing. Don't, uh, uh, Brother um, Sundar also remember a lot of songs and you lead, lead us out. So each one of us should learn to memorize and remember good songs. Everywhere we go in the trouble, you can sing the song and praise God for that. Most likely, you will never have to seek refuge from a cruelty of a concentration camp or the sword of angry king, but yet, as God child, there are enemies all around from whom you will need to flee. Temptation around you, weaknesses in your life, people who will trample your faith. This is the thing that you and I have to remember, that God wants you and I to be strong. When you face with the enemies, remember that God has a secret place for you. Could be in the cave of Abdullah. Could be in the camp where uh, Ten Boon was. A place of protection and comfort and direction for your life. There will be, there he will put the song of deliverance in your heart. You are my hiding place. Some lady wrote a song. You shelter me from the snares of my enemies and surrounded me with sweet songs of deliverance that balms the bitter wounds of my despairs. I will trust in you. Yes, I will trust in you. For there is your for there is your safe and secret place. You will sing over my broken spirit, and you will make me whole. From Julie Martin, beloved brother, sister, I hope this lesson today, a hiding place, could sometime be a good experience for you to learn from it, and 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 use this experience so you can help other peoples. Sometimes when you have trouble and, and uh, you turn the trouble into a time to listen to God and make an appointment with God and talk to Him. You run away from the world so you can see God somewhere. And God will bless your heart. And just remember, experience come when you see God. And you can see every day in your life that how God leads you to one place to another. It doesn't matter what little experience or good experience, you can always remember that God has done this for me. God done this for me. So you will have time to praise God every day. That the devil will have no time to talk to you because you always praise God 
and looking for what God has done for you. Would you do that? And would you uh, always think that no matter what comes, it is experience that God wants me to learn, and I will open my heart to accept it, welcome it, so you don't have to be discouraged. For God know that you are weak, but yet God said, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for I am your God, for I am with you, and I will heal you if you are sick. I will give you a place, of a hiding place, if you need it. So God is there for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord be with you. May you have a courage of David and Ten Boon so you can go out to the world and face situations that may come. But make it a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. A gracious Heavenly Fathers, thank you, Lord, for the experience of David. It might have been a history, but yet you wrote it down for us to remember that God never forsakes those who love him, will provide a hiding place for us. For we know God is merciful, God is loving. God will never forsake his people. May you bless my brothers, my sisters who are here today, Lord, and give them a heart of love, a heart of trust, heart of faith, that they will never give up when situations like David have had in the cold and grays and, and, and wet um, caves, in the darkness where he lived, but yet you sent 600 men to be with him and he have a family once again. Thank you for reminding us through the story of David. Help us to prosper. Help to us to have courage to move on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.